Welcome back to the Chelsea Career Mode. It's season two, episode two. I know we're back on Monday, but there was a bonus video over the weekend on Saturday with the opening episode of this second season. If you missed it, check the channel page or the playlist for it and you can catch up. We haven't played any games yet, so you've not missed any on the field action. But we're just kind of, well, we were, setting up the, uh, the window ahead of us. Moving on some players, raising some funds and deciding who the hell we wanted to buy for this starting 11. We, of course, have already bought Tammy Abraham for the 11. He starts up top. We've changed formation as well and dropped Nkunku to a cam roll. And we were looking to improve on the right-hand side of the front three. A bajillion comments came in. Thank you very much indeed for them. Of course, as well, thank you for, to those that left their comments uh, in the comment section. That'll be John White to Nathan Hart as well and to Ron2877. Thank you very much for your continued support in the comment section. Nearly 200 comments on that first episode, which was... Uh, and I've sifted through them all. And, uh, well, the shortlist is long. It's not really a shortlist anymore. So I won't... I won't go into any detail on a number of them. But the most popular option in the, uh, in the shortlist, or in the comment section, sorry for this right-sided midfield role was Michael Elise. But as you can see, he moved to Sassuolo six months ago. So I'm not sure, it wasn't in this window, otherwise it would say so here. I'm not sure I could really justify that. I know I sold Robert Sanchez after six months, but I feel like that was an isolated incident because of the situation at the time. Ryan Cherky was also very popular in the comment section. I'm intrigued to see how good he is because he's got a number of traits. I know his ceiling is very high. Pedro Neto was also popular, but Neto just isn't that good in 24, unfortunately. The other most popular option, actually, oh, there's gonna be some right mids in here as well. The other most popular option was um, Pedro Gonçalves from Sporting, which is very, very doable. And he has a number of uh, play styles that would be particularly impressive. He's very good technically. Physically, he's good enough. And well, quite frankly, he just looks like a very, very good player. So I don't think I'll go for Elise. Pedro Gonçalves is probably the way I'd go. But I want to get scout reports on everybody first before we definitively make a decision. Players like Rafael Leal, even though it's I couldn't really go from anywhere. I finished eighth, Milan finished second in the Champions League. I can't afford him anyway. Uh, so that's not doable. There were a couple of left field and Sancho was quite popular as well. Because obviously his scenario, his situation at Manchester United at the moment. He's still only 24, Jaden Sancho. So maybe that is a doable one. Finesse shot and flair traits. There are a couple of really odd ones, that, or left field ones, that might work. Antoine Griezmann is uh, Atleti, obviously. They finished fifth and are in the Europa League. So I could maybe sign Griezmann, play him at Cam, and move Nkunku out wide. That could work. There was another left field one as well. Sadio Mane, obviously, at Saudi, in the Saudi League, has been at Al Nasser for a year. And he's still got it at 32. Very much so. So Sadio Mane could be an option as well. There, basically, there are too many players that would be really good and I can't decide. So I'm just going to pick one and then we'll have to live with that decision if that's okay. Drop the video a like if you're enjoying this save. Of course, please do make sure you subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more. And I do want to say a massive thank you to Prids, to Wonga, Jay and Michael for all joining the Patreon over the past few days. Thank you very much indeed. A number of those scout reports will come back before Fulham. Some will come back after Fulham. So we're going to head towards Fulham and take it day at a time. <gasps> Ready? Breathe, compose yourself and somehow decide between 50 players. We've reached match day one. Still waiting on a handful of scout reports to come back. In fact, the majority of them as it happens. Uh, they're playing a 4-1-4-1 here. New signings in there. Lukic may be a new signing. Sasha Lukic, if it's Sasha Lukic. Um, Timothy Castagna on the right-hand side at right-back. I don't know whether that's a uh, signing that's just in this save or whether that was done in real life with Leicester's relegation. Uh, Martin up top at striker is a name that looks unfamiliar to me for a Fulham starting lineup. Key defensive player is Calvin Bassey at left-back, but other than that, no one really stands out of them, supposedly. Going to give our new uh, lineup or new formation a go in this one. And then, of course, with uh, Tammy Abraham making his 
second debut for the club. We hope that we can get a positive result. We not only want to qualify for the Champions League, though, we absolutely want to make a challenge for the title if we can. I've dropped Polina from the starting lineup per your request in the comment section as well. Joao Polina okay, dropped, and uh, Moises Caicedo is back in the 11 in that right CDM role. So that's the starting 11 as it stands. But obviously, with a view to replacing Noni Madueke at the moment. Here's Lukic. Out wide to Wilson. Wait for the cutback. Wait for the cutback. There it is. And oh, Costa can only palm it to Calvin Bassi. Key defensive player, apparently, according to the pre match report. Well, uh, he's pretty good going forward, apparently. Knows where to be at the right time. Anyway, Fulham lead by a goal to nil for the first game of the season but there's certainly plenty of time to change that now oh, it's, it's not great from Diogo but I'm not sure there's much more he can do there I tried to cut it out with Chile and read the cutback just read it at the wrong time Harry Wilson cutting that back to Sasha Lukic who is a real life Fulham player I'm reliably informed by my live chat over on Twitch so I mistakenly thought that he was a new signing similarly with Timothy Castagna as well he too is a new is uh, a new signing for Fulham in real life since uh, the relegation. Oh, Tammy's in of Leicester City. Tammy Abraham, the return of the king. He's back in business at Stamford Bridge. I'd have to have a look at his profile. I'm not sure who that Martin is. Oh, that is poor from Reed, but the cannons off Sterling are full straight back to them. And now Christopher and Kunku's played in as they've given it away again, Fulham rather poor in possession so far. There's the run by Moises Caicedo. It will fall for Tammy. He'll look for Caicedo. And he said Diop's in the way this time. Oh, they just can't keep possession, Fulham. So happy to gift it back to me every time. And Kungu's in. And Bernd Lennon makes a brilliant save to ensure we don't get the lead for the first time today. Reese James with the delivery from the corner, which is good. And Tammy's up. And Tammy scores again. Some said Tammy wasn't good enough. Tammy says I am. Henry Martin finds Calvin Bassey, who can only find Rhys James, thankfully. Having that target man up top, making a big difference so far in this game. It just allows me that long ball out if I feel like I need it at some point in the build-up or just to clear the defence. No matter where, okay, got Moises Caicedo here. Enzo's going to drop. We're going to look for a third. Fulham have had chances to try and get themselves a second as well. Chile with the delivery. No, he's arriving. Oh... Brilliant header, excellent save, and a fortuitous rebound that even if it had fallen back to Noni, had struck an arm. Oh, wow, could have been 3-1. Excellent delivery, and they've given it away again, Fulham, and Tammy's in for a hat-trick here, potentially Tammy Abraham on his return to Stamford Bridge has a hat-trick! Well then, silencing those haters, looking you dead in the eyes. Wow! That's a per I think that's a perfect hat-trick for Tammy as well. Right foot, left foot, header. A perfect hat-trick on debut. Unbelievable, Jeff. Henry Martin. Oh, he's kicked that straight at Caicedo. That's been their undoing here, Fulham. They've not been bad in every aspect other than... Oh, I should have finished them off by just finishing it. Other than just gifting the ball back again every time. They're really poor in possession. 20 minutes to go, it's 3-1, and we look destined to start the league title assault with a dub. I'm really going to make a conscious effort to rotate the squad a bit more this season. Oh, bro, you're chopped by Issa Diop, who's going to be in trouble here. I think it's probably only going to be a yellow, but it's the first time I've seen this particular referee can with an injured player on the floor like that. Issa Diop, yellow card. Annoyingly, I've taken Reese James off, and this would actually it's probably a bit too far out to think about shooting. Um, I could just play it short next to me. I know there's a man. Oh, all right, it wasn't. We're supposed to go to Fafana. Not to worry. Can we maybe score a fourth? Caicedo, mm, probably not with him anyway. No matter where, okay, in behind. Tuck that back, looking for Broya, and oh, that was the attempted shot with Broya. Oh, it might still fall. It has done. Caicedo has Noni there. Okay, passing a bit of an issue for me at the minute. Leslie! Uga Chugwu! It's 4-1. Leslie on the score sheet. Stood up well. DSRC. Uga Chukwu will clear. And referee will probably blow his final whistle soon. We couldn't have asked for a better start, really. 
Yes, we went 1-0 down, but hell of a response. A perfect hat-trick for Tammy Abraham on debut back at Stamford Bridge. Oh, he... Well, the referee gave him the ball, and then he uh, le left it with the referee. That's gone well. Couldn't be happier with that, genuinely. I don't mind the first goal conceding, because we went and dominated the game from then on. Right. Now then, give me those scout reports and we could get even better with a new right winger. We've had some scout reports back now. A number of players effectively at this stage are being ruled out of the running. But I'm still waiting on uh, on a handful more players like Mavadidi and uh, Noah Lang and players like that. But Farrett Shelley is another one that would be very good but I can't afford. So I'll remove him and Leal. So I'm still not sure. I, I still think I'm leaning Pedro Gonçalves but... Wait, how things, wait and see how things develop. Spurs lost on the opening day of the season. After one game, we're fifth. Well, it's better than last season already. Tottenham... I'd love Kulisevsky after whether he destroyed me last season, but I, I can't justify Kulisevsky at this stage. We've got Dio Upamecano alongside Vicky van der Ven uh, in centre-back. Terra Malassia at left-back now as well. Tanguy and Dombele's back in the fold here. Tottenham lost their opening game of the season, but they knocked me out of the FA Cup on penalties, and I'd very much like to get some payback for that by making it two from two in the Premier League. Corner for Spurs. Kulosevsky taking it short there into Hume Son. The two of them, to be fair, run run the roost here at Spurs. They finished third last season, I think, Tottenham in the Premier League, so they have Champions League football, which is why I couldn't really go for Kulosevsky much as I would love Gulisevsky. I think we might have to wait to uh, either the Leeds save or the Cambridge save, perhaps, for uh, a signing of someone like Kulisevsky from a club like Tottenham. We'll have to wait and see how things develop. Here he is, Dejan Kulisevsky, trying to be my nemesis once more. And he's found Ben Tancor, who could square it here in the end, despite the facts that fans claim a, pe a penalty for a foul that, as far as I'm concerned, wasn't there. They're not going to get one. And now we have the opportunity to counter-attack. Although Sterling's given it straight back to Hoiberg. And we're currently channeling our inner Fulham in this first half. And continually just giving possession away. Oof, that was supposed to be a 1-2. It's not gone well at all. I tell you what, I cannot keep possession at the moment. Caicedo trying to make up for his error. Definitely not able to do so. Richarlison has a number of options here. Enzo Fernandez trying to close him down. I think he got a touch on that. It will be a corner to Tottenham. I've barely gotten out of my own half so far. This is the challenge, whilst teams like Fulham might be readily, readily brushed aside. The big boys, not quite so much. I think Costa saved that with his face. And it falls to Tangi and Dombele. And despite all of the bodies in front of him, he's still able to find the back of the net. I'm sure Costa saved that with his face there. He dived in. That was proper Superman, wasn't it? And I tried to get there with a number of players. Keeper did stick an arm out. If he dives, maybe, or to be fair, he's on, the, he's on the floor still. And it's quite an unrealistic attempted save anyway. I want to see if he saved that with his face. A good goal by Tango Nobello with the amount of people in front of him to be able to squeeze the shot off. It's very, very good indeed. These runs down the line are just so hard to defend. And there's just no, no measure of marking whatsoever in the middle. But you guys know this stuff already. Did he save it with his face here? Comes in Diogo Costa. Yeah, he does. It, he, ben Tango kicks it against... Costa's hand and it then hits him in the top of the head and falls straight to Tangi and Dombele who to be fair to him has a very big gap there to aim that through the gap closes and Moises Caicedo so very nearly gets there but his foot falls out of the way and it's a good 1-0 lead for Tottenham and I cannot deny them that 1-0 lead they have been by far the better side and deserve that we've been really poor in this one so far oh but Spurs making mistakes and Tammy could be in to immediately equalise. Tammy Abraham does exactly that in front of those travelling fans. You can't switch off when the big man's around. As good as Tottenham have been. There's their foot. They've shot themselves in it. Tyrrell Malassia with the ball forward. There are seconds to go in the first half. Hume Son is probably going to make me wish there were none left. Down the line again. It's just It's so hard to defend these balls. Richarlison buries it and it's 2-1 Tottenham. He just can't seem to get the defenders to react quickly enough to close the man down. 
Maybe it's just me. Maybe I'm rubbish. It's, it's probably me. I'm definitely rubbish. It's 2-1 to Tottenham. Sterling's there, but Petro Porro steps up and nips in really well. DSRC does the same. That was particularly well done. Go out wide to Noni, and Kunku's making the run. He's been quiet so far, Christopher and Kunku, but he was relatively quiet in that cam roll before. We just didn't necessarily have the man up top that was making up for that. Tammy with a burst of pace, but Malasia steps in. I'll try and get more out of Christopher and Kunku. He scored quite a few goals for me last season, but obviously that was as the front man. And to be honest, Tammy's already doing something similar this season too. Can Reese James cope with the pace? He could mean Son here, no. Tangi and Dombele's in behind here. Little back heel, Son. Di Sassi takes it off his keeper. Reese James wins that header well, and Noni needs to win this, and has done well, thankfully. Tammy will just work it back. Let's just keep it away from Spurs right now. Half an hour left. I've had one shot, I scored it. If I could have a second and score again, that'd be lovely. Kulisevsky. Mm, still Kulisevsky. Here's the point where I'm just letting them have it by the byline like that. I'm just trying to deal with it with the goalkeeper and mark all the cutbacks instead. Kulisevsky. He's done it again. You can have it there. I'm quite happy for you to have it there. Block all the cutbacks. Okay, if we've got an answer to that, then that will probably nullify 80% of the goals I concede at the minute. Jesus Christ, Pierre. <laughs> what a challenge. Carlo's on the run, but I'm not sure I can get it to him. Find Nkunku here. And Enzo. Now we can get it to Mikhailo. He was itching to get in behind there. Just waiting and holding the run. Tammy. And Kunku. 2-2. Mikhailo Mudrik off the bench to make an impact. Just as my defenders at one end don't mark anybody in the box and just stand there. Apparently Tottenham's want to do the same as well. Chile's done well there. Oh, they've gone for me a little bit. Enzo looking for the runner, Tammy. He's got Mudrick with him here. We'll look to utilise Mudrick's pace, shall we, by cutting inside. Finding a teammate. Oh, Hoybier cuts it out well, but then gives it away again. And Reese James has stepped there. And this is opening up brilliantly. Christopher and Kunku could be in again. Cuts it back. Enzo! Oh, my Lord. How have they kept that out? Deflected onto the post and then cleared away. I don't quite know how we haven't gone 3-2 up. Unbelievable, Jeff. Well in, Reese. Tammy's off. Splitting the defensive line, but I'm going to need support. Here it is. And Mikhailo around the outside. Modric! Operation win the Premier League is fully up and running. 2-0. 2-1 down against... 1-0 down. 2-1 down. And now 3-2 up against Tottenham. The full story. Mikhailo Modric off the bench has been superb in this one. You love to see it. Get in. I'm going to go all the way back to the goalkeeper and just see the timeout. Ref, blow your whistle, please. Chelsea, three. Tottenham, two. When we were really poor in the first half, I could barely move in the first half for Tottenham pressure. I thought, we are going to get battered here. And to be fair, in terms of overall gameplay, we were battered in the first half there, but... What a response in the second half. Coventry City managed to make it to the Premier League. They got beaten 4-0 at home by Liverpool there. Really refreshing to see Coventry back in the Premier League. That's a proper childhood moment for me in the 90s. But it does look weird on FIFA slash FC to see Coventry City in the Premier League. Really quite odd indeed. But, well, Operation Premier League is going really well so far. A 4-1 win, a 3-2 win. The goals are flying in. We've got lots of scout reports back. I'm going to work through those. See you in a moment. Intriguing. Manchester United have offered me 54.8 million plus Jadon Sancho, which says to me that Jadon Sancho is very much available for transfer. All of the scout reports have come back now. In fact, almost all, probably. No, all of them have come back. And at the moment, it's still kind of Pedro Gonçalves and Jadon Sancho that are the two go-tos. So, Santo obviously, 83 acceleration, not a great sprint speed, but very agile and great balance. Great passing, great ball control and dribbling, good curve. Not great in the shot, but does he need to be? I don't know. His passing's more important. His crossing is also decent at 81 as well. Technically, though, Gonsalves is superior. I think it's fair to say. Superior. And as so many play styles, he's just not quick. But I could train his pace. 
it has to. I think it just has to be Gonsalves. It's got to be Gonsalves. I don't see any other reason. I don't see any reason for it to be not Gonsalves at this particular moment in time. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pay the release clause. I'll offer 42, and we'll just see what they say to a valuation bid. 63 is what they're asking for. Uh, let's let's have a reevaluation of that, shall we? Come down from they've come down by 10 million already. I'd be tempted to just accept that off the bat. I've got 90 million available to me. 53 is what we will bid here, just to make it a round number. Why would you not just meet me at 53? They asked for 53.2. To be fair, why did I not just accept that? I've dropped it to 53 to keep it a round number. They're like, actually, can we have it in the middle? Can we have 53.1? Fine. Have 53.1 million pounds sporting. We're both trying to be as pernickety as the other. And uh, I give in in the end. I don't want to have the deal fall through. He's only on 23,000 pounds a week only. Wow. He's so usable as well, Gonzalez. He can play in so many different positions that... He's just going to be brilliant. He can, we can drift him into a cam roll as well if we want to take Nkunku off and then bring Noni Madueke off the bench as well. 26 years of age, so certainly still got plenty of uh, life left in those legs. We'll give him a four-year deal. No release clause suits me down to the ground. And he's not going to give me what he wants salary-wise, but I'll offer him a respectable salary of £75,000 a week plus £850,000 signing on fee and that should be good enough to entice him to sign. He's actually asked for three grand more and an appearance bonus. So how about we remove the bonus and I'll just give you 80... I'll just give you 80 grand a week. How's that sound? 82. Fine. £82,000 a week. Not quite going as smoothly as some of the other negotiations we've done, but... We get our man. Pedro Gonçalves is in, and Pedro Gonçalves will start, provided he's fit, for the next game against Crystal Palace. New man through the door. Fun is good, but I wouldn't say he's world class. None of my centre-backs really are world class. They all have the opportunity to grow, of course. But if someone were to like give me a really, really quality fee for Wesley Fofana. I'd probably be open to letting him go and throwing Badi Ashile into the starting lineup, if I'm honest. But this next game against Crystal Palace, I may well switch the, the, the lineups around a little bit. I mean, let me know for January, YouTube comment section. Do we let someone like Fofana go if we can get a mad fee for him? Or no, no centre back at the minute stands out more so than anyone else. Badi Ashile, DSRC, Fafana, they're all about the same in game. So I don't really know what to do with the centre backs. They're all going to grow, so I guess they're fine. But could I sell Fafana for 60 million, add that to the 36.9 I've got left, and buy someone that's proper, proper quality? Maybe. But we're, again, similar to the, the right wing situation. Are we in a position with no European football that we can justify signing someone of proper world-class quality? Because presumably anyone that is any good is going to be somewhere already. Apart from someone maybe like Antonio Silva, who's at Benfica, or at least I think he's still at Benfica, who's going to grow massively. But I don't know if he's going to be higher rated than Favana. It's a, it's, a, it's a weird one. So you can see Crystal Palace's starting lineup here. Obviously, Elise has left them and did so last season. Decore and Lerma sat holding with Ezzy in the, uh, the cam spot. They've got two promoting on the bench, so keep an eye out for him. Sam Johnson's been very good for Crystal Palace in real life this season. And Sergi Roberto at right back. Alberto Moreno at left back. Look out. A tired Noosa on the left is an interesting decision, but they play uh, kick and rush. Apparently, he's their key attacking player. He may well be, but if he's too knackered to do anything, then you're not really going to be able to use him, are you? Well, Operation Premier League's going very well so far. So let's keep it going. Although I am going to make a couple of changes, I think. She late with the ball out wide to Reese James to kick us off today. And the line to Gonsalves, his first action in a Chelsea shirt. Get him an assist, maybe. This is his first action in a Chelsea shirt. Oh my God, what a ball from Tammy Abraham. And Sam Johnson's made a mistake. I praised him, saying in real life he's been in good form recently and deserves the England call up. But he's not put himself. In the spotlight there, in a positive way, has he? Enzo Fernandez, maybe it's just pure shot power that beats the keeper. Lovely assist by Tammy Abraham. 
absolutely superb. And yeah, Sam, what are you doing, mate? He like leans to his left and puts his arms to his right. That's a weird animation, I think. It's a, it's a FIFA goal, isn't it? Oh, Roy, sort your bloody hair out, will you, pal? Jesus Christ. Oh, nice tackle by Gonsalves, and Tammy could get another assist. And Kunku! Johnson makes a good save this time. And Kunku, just shy of three bars, straight into the wall. All right, sick. Uh, Mikhailo Mudrick. Oh, he's beaten his man. Mikhailo, top corner! Not enough shot power behind it. Let's try again. Reese James. Tammy, no, it's gone towards Pedro again. It's a good header by Gonsalves, and they will clear here. Mudrick. I swear Mudrick came off the bench with the number 10 shirt recently. Oh, no. Gonsalves has been given the number 10 shirt after arriving at the club. So Mudrick now doesn't have his number 10 shirt. Maybe I'll change that. Nice by Tammy and Kunku. It's 2-0. We're ripping Crystal Palace apart the same way we did to Fulham. This Chelsea side are in business now. And then lost it again. Injured for, what, three months last year? We definitely missed him when he wasn't here. If he's going to pick up another knock, that's probably a fail. Then... It seems like he's rather injury prone at the minute. I'd be tempted to take him off to try and protect him from that injury, but I don't know if that really makes any difference. Once the game has decided that someone's picked up an injury, then they just kind of have that injury, don't they? Abraham into Mudrick and Tammy again on the breakaway. Really influential Tammy Abraham in this game so far and this season, and that is a tidy little finish. Chelsea 3, Crystal Palace 0. We are free scoring at the moment. Ezzy with a free kick. Lofted well. Up by Polina. Lifted by Martson. And there's four minutes added on here. And we're just going to take our time. We've quite clearly bossed the game. It's, uh, at the risk of making the same mistake as last season. Where we could have finished in a European spot with it. If we didn't unfortunately have it. I'm not worried about goal difference at this stage. A 3-0 win is certainly good enough at this moment in time. And come the end of the season, if we keep winning games like that, then 3-0 scorelines will surely be fine. But we obviously made the mistake of not prioritising goal difference at the end of the last... Well, I don't know whether we made the mistake. We just were conceding a lot of goals at the beginning of the season last year, weren't we? And if it weren't for that issue with the gameplay more so than anything else, then we would maybe have qualified for Europe in seventh spot ahead of Arsenal on goal difference. But we're in fine fettle so far this season. Three wins from three. Transfer deadline day is upon us now. Got a couple of emails. Uh, seven days. A FEMA contusion? Christ, that sounds painful. He's out for seven days, Enzo Fernandez, with the nature of the fixture list. Arsenal and Manchester City in the next month, as well as West Ham. We should get a Carabao Cup game drawn in there somewhere too. But I think we're absolutely fine with the squad at this particular moment in time. So, Giuliano Simeone's gone from Atletico to Forest on deadline day. And Helenio's gone from Leipzig to Monaco. And Benjamin Enrix, Benjamin, Benjamin Enrix has gone from Leipzig to Villarreal. So, and Leipzig cutting their defence by the looks of things. They are the biggest deals so far today. Yusuf and Makoko might be coming to Crystal Palace. That'd be a big deal. Angel Gomez joins Sassuolo. And Albert Lafont has come to West Ham. As Man United express an interest in signing Moises Caicedo. Continually, Badi Ishile is drawing bids, but I'm hoping Badi Ishile will remove his transfer request sooner rather than later. Uh, we might be seeing Joseph Darby, the Patreon player, go to Real Madrid. Oyan Sonset to Spurs will be an intriguing one. And uh, Yusuf, Mako Yusuf and Makoko continually linked with Crystal Palace. Uh, latest deals include those on your screen. Carlos Soler going on loan from PSG to Frankfurt. Be a good squad player, Carlos Soler, to be fair. Top deals so far now include Yusuf and Mokoko going for nearest makes no difference, £40 million to Crystal Palace. That will certainly make a difference for their attacking play. Uh, Sunset moves to Spurs for £79.3 million. Massive deal there to bring him to the Premier League. Sunset is a player that is so utilitarian and an excellent signing for any side that decides to bring him in. More potential moves for Patreon players as it stands here as you can see Mario Pashalic might be moving back to the Premier League to come to Brentford Tyro Awini has left Tyro Awini has left Nottingham Forest to go to was it Hellas Verona there 
Ito to Borussia Mucci Gladbach. No other massive deals go through at this stage. Jay Garrett, Joseph Dubby has gone to Real Madrid for £8 million. We'll update that on the, uh, the spreadsheet for the Patreon players. Alfie Devine to Fulham for 2.9. No other massive deals. There's a final big deal for the window. Michel Chetralda moves to Leipzig for 43.5, putting that money from the Angelino and Benjamin Henricks deal to, deals to good use. The two defenders for one. You hope that their squad depth is good enough to deal with that. We'll show you the uh, the biggest deals of the window in the transfer history tab, and you can decide whether you think any of these have been any good or not. So, Pedri, wow, to Real Madrid, and Bruno as well. So, they spent over 200 million on central midfielders, Paris Saint Germain, in this transfer window. Pedri for 137.7, Bruno for 86.5. Sunset, we saw Edemili Tau leaves Real Madrid to Napoli for 75.3. Ashraf Hakimi joins Manchester United. That's really good for them and terrible for us. Said sold Pedro and Gavi at Barcelona. 68.1 million to AC Milan. That's intriguing. Probably terrible for Barcelona. Saliba to Bayern as well. Felix to uh, Atalanta. Elmas to Borussia Dortmund as well. Cancelo's gone to Real Madrid. We signed Gonçalves. Bayern have sold Goretzka. Canate to Leverkusen. Bentan Kurz left Tottenham after playing against me earlier today to go to Newcastle. Vitinha to Inter. Guiri to Roma, presumably to replace Tammy Abraham, who we brought in from Roma. Nico Gonzalez to Dortmund. Hoshkada, we saw Lukaku, we were involved with. Adam Oda Lutman moving around in Europe once more. Diego Dallo goes to Galatasaray. Udogi moves to Valencia. Presto Kimpembe, presumably, is the Edo Militao replacement then at Real Madrid. At least they have replaced him. Leroy Zane, back to the Premier League, back to Manchester City. Tomar Lamar to AC Milan, Thomas Partey to Bayern Munich. Per Scherz moves within Europe once more. Torino to Getafe this time. Almeida, another Portuguese signing for Wolves. I think it's Portuguese. Are you Portuguese, sir? Are you Portuguese? That's Bruno Ches. I think, I'm pretty sure Almeida is Portuguese. So another Portuguese signing for them. Indeed he is. Uh, Medina to Wolfsburg. Luke Shaw goes to Lazio. Rodriguez to Bayern Munich. Malassi to Spurs, as we saw, because we played against him. David Neres to Bologna from Benfica. Jordan Pickford goes to Roma, is an intriguing one. Michael Damsgaard has gone to Valencia. Luis Alberto to Barcelona. So they have signed someone in central midfield to replace Pedro and Gavi, but that's not necessarily the best of moves, as far as I'm concerned for them, is it, really? Davide Calabria to Atletico Madrid. Bryce Samba on the move now from Lens to Monaco within France. Fabian Ruiz to Villarreal. Tammy Aram for 28 million is an absolute bargain. Andre Silva to West Ham is an intriguing one. Salamakas to Celta. Fabio Vieira leaves Arsenal. Giovanni La Celsa goes to Roma. Charles to Ketelara from AC Milan to Brentford for just 23 million pounds is an absolute bargain as well. That's a wonderful move for Brentford. They'll be very, very happy with their business there. Just as we're very, very happy with our business too. Arsenal on the horizon in a week's time. But £600 million was spent on transfer deadline day. I'll show you the Patreon players at the end. I'll update the spreadsheet and uh, let you guys know anyone that's moved. But for now, for the majority of you that will be finished with the episode, thank you very much for watching. Do drop the video a like if you've enjoyed, of course. Continue to leave your comments and your feedback in the section down below. It really helps me out. It helps the channel out. It gives you the chance to be on the LED board behind me, of course, as well. And... Uh, you scratch my back, I'll scratch yours. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Do come and join me on Twitch as well to watch the streams live too. If not, I'll see you back here on YouTube tomorrow for another Chelsea episode here and my player episode on the second channel. Link in the description down below. And I'll see you next time. Future Chess here helping out past Chess who forgot to record the Patreon bit. So uh, you can see everybody on the uh, left-hand side, your names, your ratings, etc., your updated ratings for this new season. If it's red, that means you've stayed where you were. If it's <coughs> yellow, it means you're still a free agent. And if it's green, it means you moved. And there have been quite a few moves in this save so far in just the first uh, summer transfer window. A couple of you end up at Reggiana. Yuso uh, and uh, Adam Austin both now teammates in Italy there. Aiden's gone from Schalke to Manchester United. A couple of free agents have moved to more realistic uh, teams. <clears throat> it's been a no something of note that in previous years, everybody that started at a club would stay at that club. And everybody that you put in the free agents would stay at the free agents unless you signed them, released them, and then they progressed from there. But this year, it seems... Players can move, 
regardless, great. But because everybody that's a created player has a potential to be special tag, someone that starts at a club is likely to be picked up early doors by one of the biggest clubs in Europe. So you'll notice that Manchester United and then Atletico Madrid and then Borussia Dortmund and Barcelona and there was another Real Madrid and Arsenal and Barcelona and there were a few Barcelona ones actually and a couple more Real Madrid ones too. Barcelona from Cambridge United. So the the big clubs are snapping you up from smaller clubs that wouldn't necessarily be looking to sell you to a club like that. So they're a little bit more unrealistic. Whereas those that are free agents seeming to are uh, seeming to move to clubs to that kind of suit their level. So Danubio, Almeria, RC Lens, uh, Fiorentina, Angers, etc. Reggiana again. Real Betis. We've got Cheltenham in there as well. Roma is a little bit higher, but not one of the big few at the moment in Italy. Obviously, Roma a giant club. And then defensively, Justicia uh, for Scott as well. So I think moving forward for future saves, now that I can just throw you all in the free agents and you'll get signed by anyone, I'm just going to leave you all as free agents. That was the original plan with the Patreon VIP big one when um, I first set it up. We obviously then had to redo that or refigure it out when we found out that you didn't actually move anywhere. But now you do, and you'll have more of a realistic career if you stay as a free agent rather than starting at a club. So for the next save after this, I will uh, leave you all as free agents and you'll have a more realistic career path. You'll also, for the next save, which will be uh, us starting slightly lower down the pyramid, you'll start slightly lower rated so that again you'll have more of a realistic progression from smaller club to bigger club to bigger club to bigger club etc rather than just going uh free agent to intermediate club to big club or start at a club and go straight to Real Madrid which seems to be the pattern at the minute feel free to pause it at any moment to have a closer look at your rating and your current career path there are so many of you now Firstly, thank you so much for the fantastic support for this VIP Patreon Big One segment. Uh, there's so many of you now that if I were to sit and go through you all individually, it would take me forever. And at the end of a very long episode, I will uh, not do that at this particular moment in time. At any point, if you'd like to know your individual stats or have an update on your career path, do come over when I'm live on Twitch and I will show you all the information you'd like to see. So uh, if you want a more in-depth look, then do come and join me on stream. And uh, moving forward, of course, we'll still keep up to date with all of your moves and your ratings, etc. So uh, when we've had a less busy window or less full episode, uh, I'll, I'll go through them all individually. But uh, there are a number of you, as you can see, you can kind of tell from the, the colour coding what's happened to you. I'll also include loans as yellow as well. So say, uh, for example, Emma is at Barcelona, he's only 73 rated, and if he goes out on loan to Girona, then I would put Corona in there in yellow, meaning that you were then on loan from your previous parent club, Barcelona. That's how that would work. So we've got a number of you that have actually joined the Patreon since we started the Chelsea save. So there's another six of you that are going to be involved in this for the next save as well. The current plan is for that next save to be Leeds, I believe. Uh, you'll have the chance to vote on it at the time, but I'm thinking of doing Leeds next, and then we'll start a Cambridge United save earlier in the, uh, the new year. So... Uh, that's your current situation. Thank you for your support. Apologies for the sound of me in this final segment. Uh, this part of my face is numb from being at the dentist. So that's why I might be a little bit... <laughs> throughout the course of this. So thank you very much for watching. Drop the video a like if you've enjoyed. Uh, future Chez telling past Chez to sort his life out and make sure he gets it all recorded before he edits the video. I'll see you later.